Okay, then I'll start with the syllabus. So I welcome you all for this uh, engineering geology lab. Okay. So the experiments which are which you are going to study in those in this lab are the first is the mineralogy that is the physical properties of minerals we are going to discuss okay so uh, if we go back uh, if the things go on well and if we start with the lab okay offline then you can see the minerals actually you can take them in the hand and you can study them okay so here what is your uh, task is in the first experiment you have to identify the given mineral then you have to write the properties of that minerals by seeing the mineral okay so that is the first experiment so uh, we are going to discuss today about this only that is the mineralogy so there are two types of minerals rock forming minerals and ore forming minerals which uh, the physical properties of that how to identify the mineral that we will discuss in the today's lab then next experiment is your in, uh, engineering properties of rocks so here in uh, you are going to identify the rock and write the properties of rocks so we have studied in the previous semester there are three types of rocks igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and the metamorphic rocks so we are going to discuss all these three types of rocks okay then next experiment is uh, we are going to solve three types of problems the first one you can see here that is a borehole problem okay uh, wherein we are going to uh, find out the depth of the borehole so all these problems uh, the depend strike problem then thickness of strata problem so these three types of problems you are going to solve okay uh, that you will come across when you go on the field when you are uh, working on a project like a dam or a tunnel or a reservoir there you will come across different types of rocks okay then there you need to find what is the dip of that what is strike of that what is the thickness of that what is the depth at which the rocks are available so this information is very very important for a civil engineer to lay, lay their foundation okay or to carry out the work these uh, uh, data should uh, uh, must be known to a engineer so how to find out that all the dip strike the thickness all that we are going to discuss in these three types of problems then next is the study and interpretation of topo sheets okay topo sheets are nothing but the maps okay wherein all the natural and man made features are shown on the map so uh, when you go for any uh, work the site selection first uh, first thing what we do is we study the map of that particular area that will help us to know the contours right the elevation how is the ground so that if, when you go for a construction actually on the field when you go it will give you the prior information if you know how to study that map okay so here the map will be given to you the topo sheet will be given to you and you are going to interpret that particular area okay like how, what is the highest contour what type of river is flowing there okay then uh, what type of vegetation is available what so all these things uh, we will discuss in the topo sheet okay all the man made and natural features then there is one more that is extraction of drainage basin and morphometric analysis so here the river uh, drainage pattern you have studied in the previous semesters like uh, we have different types of drainage patterns like dendritic Uh, trellis uh, rectangular parallel all these the streams which are joining to the river okay with a uh, definite pattern so that pattern we are going to identify okay and write a note on that so this is the uh, one experiment that is study of topo sheets 
then next is interpretation and drawing of sections for the geological maps so here i will give you the geological maps so here geological map means it shows the geology of the particular area so geology means uh, it will show the beds okay different rocks then it will show the folds faults unconformities okay joints whatever present on the map so that map will be given to you then you have to solve that map okay you have to if the beds are inclined you have to find out the dip strike and you have to solve the map you have to draw a cross section of that map okay and there also we are going to discuss the site for dam tunnel all these we are going to interpret okay then whether the site is good for construction of dam tunnel or not that we will come to know when you uh, take a cross section of that particular map okay then next is interpretation of satellite images so here uh, satellite image will be given to you uh, you all know that you have learned in the last module of previous semester how the satellite images are taken with the help of remote sensing right so uh, the satellites they capture they revolve around the earth and they capture the data okay and Uh, that will give us the satellite images as a output so those images how to interpret that okay you need to extract the information from that image okay so that we are going to discuss so this will again help you in carrying out various works in future okay it will tell all the information okay then last one is field work that is not possible so uh, as of now we are uh, going to study the eight experiments wherein all are compulsory okay all carries different marks and all experiments you will get in the exam okay any doubt here students this is your syllabus hello hello yes ma'am hello yes any doubt so that is your syllabus what all experiments we are going to solve so i'll start with the first experiment today that is minerals we will discuss how to identify the minerals okay so why first uh, uh, let me clear why we are studying the minerals first any idea you all know the definition of a rock rock is what the aggregate of minerals so different minerals are present in the rock right so as a civil engineer the rocks are very important for you you will use the rocks for different purposes during your construction okay so like uh, if you construct a building or a dam or a tunnel any structure you take the rocks will play a major role okay and uh, uh, when you go for site selection for dam tunnel or roads okay these rocks are available on the ground so you must know the rocks the properties of rocks so to know the properties of rocks the very important is to know what mineral it contains okay so uh, we are going to discuss the minerals first then we will go for the rocks which are very very important as a civil engineer so let me define what is a mineral so minerals all the minerals are naturally occurring so you can see so beautifully they are form in the nature so when the magma uh, it cools okay at different temperature different pressure conditions different different minerals will form while cooling the magma okay so uh, these are all the different minerals with different colors okay different shape size okay they look like flower also natural flower okay so you can see it is a mineral which looks like a rose okay 
So this is a gold, then varieties of quartz and zeolite minerals. So this is an amethyst mineral, which is a variety of quartz. Okay, so it occurs in purple color in the cavity. You can see there is all those are uh, seen in the cavity. Okay, so like this, there are over more than 5000 minerals are known today in the world. Okay, out of that, we are going to discuss hardly 20 minerals which are of engineering importance. Okay, that we are going to discuss. So, this is the world of mineral. Okay. So we'll come to uh, the definition of mineral. So the branch which studies the minerals is called as the mineralogy. So mineralogy is the study of the chemistry, the atomic structure, physical properties, and the genesis of the minerals. That is called as the mineralogy. So it is a branch of geology which deals with study of minerals. So what is a mineral we'll discuss? A mineral is an inorganic, uh, naturally occurring substance which has a definite atomic structure and a definite chemical composition. So that is the definition of a mineral. So mineral is what? It is a naturally occurring, we all know, and it is um, inorganic in nature. It is not made up of any organisms. So it is a inorganic in nature. Okay. And each mineral will have a definite atomic structure and a definite chemical composition. So that uh, forms a mineral. So this is the elemental abundance in the crust, okay? So the maximum abundant uh, element in the earth's crust is oxygen, then comes the silicon, then aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. So this is just the elemental abundance. Then there are different mineral groups based on the uh, properties, okay? The, they are divided into different groups. Okay, so maximum here you can see there are the feldspar minerals. Okay, feldspar group that is plagioclase feldspar and potassium feldspar that makes the maximum uh, percentage of mineral that comes under the rock forming mineral. Feldspar is present in uh, granite. Okay, so this is the maximum portion uh, that is availability of minerals. So plagioclase feldspar, feldspar group is more in abundance, then comes the quartz, then pyroxenes, okay, then amphiboles, then mica, clay, and there are other silicate minerals which are hardly 3%, okay, and there are non-silicate minerals like oxides, carbonates, sulfides, and native elements, they comprise 8%. So, these are, this is all how the minerals are grouped into different uh, groups, mineral groups. Okay, so then there is one word called native. Okay, native mineral means what? The minerals which occur in their pure form, pure state, like example is gold, silver, copper, platinum. Okay, all these are costly also, right? We all know the rates are uh, increasing day by day, right? So why it is so? Because they are very rare, Okay, they occur very rarely, they are, their occurrence is less, okay. Uh, so gold, silver, copper, platinum, even diamond, then they occur in their pure form, okay. There are no impurities mixed along with them. So they are called as native minerals. Then there are compound minerals, they form uh, with combining with the more than one element. So those are called as compound minerals. So those in includes silicates, oxides, sulfides and carbonates. So like for example, calcium carbonate means here calcium is also present, carbonate is also present. So like this, there are impurities also present. So those are called as compound minerals. Then we'll come to the actual part of the lab, that is the physical properties of minerals. 
so the here are the list of physical properties of minerals which we are going to discuss today so the first four properties you can see the color streak luster and diaphanity they are the light dependent properties okay the first four properties they depend on light okay so color streak luster and diaphanity we'll discuss one by one what is meaning of that then hardness specific gravity cleavage fracture tenacity then next comes is form or habit uh, then odor and crystal form so these are all the different properties of minerals which we are going to discuss in the today's lab so once you know these meaning of these properties you will uh, find those properties you will search those properties in the uh, specimen which is given to you okay so to identify that property whether the mineral is showing or not you must know first uh, the meaning of all those uh, words which we are going to use okay so we'll see the first property that is a color so as i told you it is a light dependent property so whenever light falls on the particular mineral okay so uh, it absorbs certain radiations okay and it emits certain radiations from the white light we know white light contains seven colors so the particular mineral it absorbs certain radiations okay uh, then it emits a uh, certain so uh, whatever is emitted from that mineral surface that we see as a color like for example if a mineral is looking green means it is emitting green radiations so what is color color of any mineral is a light dependent property and it is the appearance of a particular object in the light so how it appears in the light that is called as the color okay so color is not usually a def definite property of a mineral okay the color will not be a definitive as uh, it is a major constituent of the mineral for example uh, there is a mineral called malachite okay which is a copper ore which always occurs in green color okay which always occurs in green color then there is one more mineral called azurite which occurs in blue color okay so these both are the ores of copper so these minerals they are called as the idiochromatic mineral they occur in fairly constant color you go anywhere in the world if the mineral has formed okay malachite and azurite then they always occur in the green and blue color so that such minerals are called as idiochromatic minerals okay here you can see idiochromatic then there is one example uh, like quartz quartz occur in varieties of colors like here you can see that these are all the varieties of quartz okay wherein uh, you can see uh, different colors one is rosy color purple color brown color right so all these colors what you can see okay <coughs> Uh, that is uh, it, uh, such minerals which occur in varieties of color but their physical properties remains uh, same more or less same then it is called as allochromatic minerals so these are very important so color of the mineral may be either inherent or it is exotic in nature means Uh, the the color is because of the chemical composition also so such minerals uh, uh, for such minerals the color will be the diagnostic property so if the color is exotic that is because of the uh, some impurities when they get added uh, while forming the mineral then it is called as exotic so uh, the color the first one the first property that is the appearance of mineral okay in the light okay or uh, so these are the varieties of quartz okay wherein you can see varieties of colors 
रोजी पिंक व्हाइट पर्पल ब्लैक कलर स्मोकी ब्राउन कलर ओके ट्रांसपेरेंट व्हाइट मिल्की व्हाइट सो बेस्ड ऑन द कलर द नेम इज ऑल्सो गिवन टू द कॉर्ड्स ओके लाइक दिस इज स्मोकी ब्लैक इन कलर सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज स्मोकी कॉर्ड्स दिस फर्स्ट वन इज व्हाइट इन कलर सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज मिल्की कॉर्ड्स देन पर्पल कलर इज कॉल्ड एज एमिथिस्ट ओके इट इज यूज एज अ जेम स्टोन then this is rose pink in color so it is a rose quartz so like this the names are given to the mineral that is quartz so this is one more mineral variety whose properties are same but the color is different so that is a beryl which is one more mineral which is again a gemstone okay which occurs in varieties of colors uh, so uh, this is how it looks okay so such minerals are called as allochromatic minerals they have same physical property but they have different colors okay then there is one more property called luminescence so some minerals what happens uh, they glow they start glowing when they are kept under ultraviolet radiations or ultraviolet light so this occurs because uh, the mineral it will absorb the uv light and it emits the visible light so they start glowing when they are kept under ultraviolet uh, radiation so this phenomena is called as fluorescence and uh, some minerals they emit the light even after removing the source of uv light such minerals are called as phosphorescent so here is the example fluorite okay so uh, that is fluorescing that is Uh, it is glowing when it is kept under uv light okay so this is the first property of the mineral that is a color so when a mineral is given to you in the exam what you have to do you have to just see the color of that mineral if it is black brown whatever color it is showing that you have to just write one word color whatever color the mineral is showing then next property is the streak okay streak means it is again related to color only but it is the color of the mineral powder okay are you listening yes ma'am yes ma'am yes so in the image you can see here there is a black mineral okay in the second image but the color of the powder you can see that is red in color right so here what is happening what we have to observe for the streak we have to observe the color of the mineral powder so how do we get that color of the mineral powder so for that we use a plate called streak plate okay this is a porcelain plate which we use for finding out the streak you must have seen near a goldsmith uh, when you take your gold and go to the goldsmith okay they check this uh, they rub it on a plate okay on a porcelain plate and check that is the reason i'll tell you so here you can see the first image there is one black mineral and one is uh, looking like a gold okay so then the second mineral which looks like a gold that is a mineral called pyrite okay that is a iron pyrite uh, which looks like gold so it is called as fool's gold so when you rub this on the streak plate the color of the powder what you are getting is a black okay but when you rub the gold it will not give any streak okay so here the important property to identify the mineral is the color of the mineral powder okay so streak is again a distinctive property for the mineral okay and it is used to identify the mineral so how you will define streak color of the mineral powder okay so here are the examples uh, like hematite whose color is black but the streak is red in color then uh, there is one more called magnetite whose color is black and the streak is also black then chromite whose color is black but the streak is brown brown sulfur the color is yellow and the streak is light yellow like that there are different 
uh, minerals which show a uh, different streak okay streak may be same as that of the body color or it may change so that will tell you or that will help you to identify the mineral so color of the mineral powder by rubbing on the streak plate you will get the powder so that is uh, called as the streak so up to hardness 6 you will get the streak because the hardness of the streak plate itself is 6 okay so the minerals like uh, less harder than 6 okay whose hardness is less than 6 they can give the streak you can see the color of the powder which is produced on the streak plate if it is not producing any powder we will write the streak as absent okay then next property is luster okay luster of the mineral is the appearance of uh, the mineral uh, surface in reflected light okay when you hold the mineral in the hand okay when the light is falling on the mineral surface then the light which is reflecting from the surface okay that uh, gives a particular shine to the surface or uh, it gives a particular appearance to the surface in the reflected light so that appearance is called as the luster so luster of the mineral is appearance of the mineral surface in reflected light so this depends upon the refractive index of the mineral the absorption capacity of the mineral and nature of the surface of the mineral so there are two types of lustres one is metallic and other one is non metallic so i'll uh, show the uh, images examples so you will understand what is meaning of luster so here you can see few of the minerals uh, which looks like metal right when you look at them they give a feeling that they are metals right so they shine like a metal metal is like your copper gold silver okay iron okay all these are metals so they shine like a metal so they are called as uh, they have the metallic luster so here what we are observing the uh, mineral surface in reflected light how it looks okay so you can see all these minerals they are shining like a metal so it it is called as metallic luster so this is one type another type is non metallic under non metallic we have varieties of lustres uh, like it is uh, ranging from a very brilliant luster as that of the diamond you can see the diamond they shine very uh, they have a very brilliant shine so such uh, luster is called as adamantine adamantine we use for diamond if the mineral is shining like a diamond we use the word as adamantine then uh, there are minerals which are very dull greasy grease like you can see the next image the second image wherein the mineral is looking like a grease that is a opal opal is again a variety of quartz which looks like a grease okay the surface what we are observing here the mineral surface in reflected light okay then uh, next type of non metallic luster is vitreous okay vitreous the meaning is the surface looks like broken glass okay here the mineral surface uh, you can see the both the pictures okay the varieties of quartz wherein you can see the surface of the mineral it is shining like a glass like a broken glass okay so that is called as vitreous okay so that is a silicate and carbonate group of minerals they show this type of luster that is they look like a broken glass so you have to hold the mineral in the hand and you have to just observe how its surface is looking in the reflected light okay so it if it looks like a broken glass you have to write it as vitreous if it looks like resin the gum okay then you have to write it as resinous okay resin like gum like okay example is opal amber okay they are they look like 
uh, resin so they are called as resinous luster then silky silky means they look like silk silk fiber silk threads okay so this is uh, due to the reflection from the fibrous structure of the mineral example is gypsum and asbestos so gypsum you can see in the first image it it is it like it looks like silk silk threads okay in the second image that is of asbestos okay which is used as a fireproof material okay this is a asbestos mineral which has silky luster thread like okay so silky then if the mineral surface shines like a pearl okay moti then it it is called as pearly luster so pearly uh, when the surface looks like pearl so example is talc and muscovite muscovite is a variety of mica okay so talc and muscovite these are the examples for pearly luster so this is usually because of the reflection from successive layers like uh, the mica if you see it is layered okay very thin layer very transparent layers are piled one upon the other so this is because of that uh, layered nature it looks like pearl okay otherwise it will be transparent okay so when the mineral surface shines like pearl then you have to call it as pearly luster then there are few minerals like clay mineral that is a kaolinite okay like chalk we all have seen the chalk so it looks like a chalk kaolinite okay so uh, there is no reflection from the surface it looks very dull then you have to write it as dull then there is one more called earthy earthy luster uh, that is uh, the luster of a surface from which there is a little or no reflection okay there is no reflection at all it looks like earth okay earthy okay so it is due to the porous and fine grain nature of the mineral example is goethite that is uh, also called as limonite okay so Uh, this is how the earthy luster looks very dull there is no no not a uh, there is very no shining at all from the surface then there is one more called waxy okay waxy the example is serpentine and the chalcedony which is a variety of quartz okay they look like wax the candle wax okay so wax when you uh, give a proper shape when you carve do the carving into that you can um, it will increase the price of that mineral okay so this is how the waxy luster looks like it is look uh, the mineral surface looks like a wax okay then it is called as waxy so this is one more property that is the luster okay what is luster how the mineral surface looks in reflected light there are two types of lustres metallic and non metallic metallic uh, when the mineral looks like a metal okay shines like a metal then it is called as metallic luster under non metallic we have varieties of luster okay then we'll move on to the next property which is again a light dependent property that is a diaphanity so what is diaphanity uh, you in simple words you can say it as degree of transparency how transparent is the mineral okay that is called as diaphanity of the mineral so diaphanity means the ability of a mineral to transmit the light through it okay so there are three terms which we use to describe the diaphanity that is transparent translucent and opaque okay so we'll see one by one what is mean by transparent so transparent means you all know the light can pass through it and even you can see the object behind that okay that is called as transparent then translucent means light can pass through it but uh, you cannot see the object behind it that is called as translucent and the last one is opaque wherein no light is passing through that mineral and no object is seen uh, that is called as opaque 
so this is the diaphanity that is one more property you have to hold the mineral in hand and you have to just observe whether it is transparent translucent or opaque that is the degree of transparency of the mineral okay here are few examples you can see the first one is transparent next is translucent okay then the black one is opaque the metallic mineral is opaque okay like that you can write the transparency of the mineral whether it is transparent translucent or opaque so that is the one more property that is diaphanity so these first four properties color streak luster and diaphanity they are the light dependent properties next property is the specific gravity so specific gravity is the ratio of mass of the substance to the equal volume of water so here means what the weight of the mineral in air okay to the equal volume of water that is called as the specific gravity so uh, suppose if i say the chords the specific gravity of chords is 2.6 means what it is 2.6 times heavier than water okay that is the meaning of the specific gravity so in the previous semester you have done the experiment to find out the specific gravity of aggregates do you remember hello yes ma'am specific gravity of aggregates oh, you have found out using what equipment yes, Pycnometer. Pycnometer. Pycnometer, yes. So you had used pycnometer to find out the specific gravity of the aggregates. Now to find out the specific gravity of the mineral, mm -hmm. we have different instruments like one is Walker steel yard balance and one is Jolly spring balance. So here I'll explain only one. Okay, that is Walker steel yard balance. Uh, this experiment is not there for you just to know how they find out the specific gravity of a mineral you must know the procedure so just remember how it is working so that is walker steel yard balance it has a graduated beam you can see there is a scale like okay or a graduated beam okay uh, wherein uh, just a minute so here you have a graduated beam okay which is uh, like a scale okay which has the numbers on it okay that will give the value okay uh, then at the one end it will have a counter balance okay that is a weight heavy weight attached to the at one end of the scale okay and at one end it is moving freely you can see yes here you can see uh, this is a one end okay wherein it is uh, uh, freely moving okay and at the other end here you can see there is a heavy weight which is attached to the scale then first what we have to do we have to take a mineral okay this is a piece of mineral we have to tie it to the string with the help of a uh clip at, uh, which is given then uh, you you have to uh, suspend the mineral on this scale okay then uh, when you put the mineral on the scale or the graduated beam what happens it starts oscillating it starts oscillating then Uh, once it starts oscillating what you have to do you have to adjust this mineral you have to move this on the scale and you have to adjust this counterbalance also 
till what till the beam becomes horizontal you have to do this so till the beam becomes horizontal you have to just go on moving the mineral on the scale here and there you have to adjust and you have to rotate this balance also counter balance okay then once the beam becomes horizontal you have to note down the reading okay so that is the uh, you can say that is a that is uh, a we will note down as a that is weight of the mineral in air okay then we'll take uh next step is what we'll take one beaker which is full of water and we'll immerse the same mineral into the water okay then once the mineral is immersed in the water it gains the weight right so again the beam starts oscillating okay then what happens uh you should not disturb this balance now what you have to do you have to just adjust the mineral you have to just move the mineral on the uh, graduated beam okay along with the beaker you have to see that the uh, mineral is completely immersed into the water so uh, once the beam becomes again horizontal okay then you have to note down the second reading that is we'll call it as b okay so b is what weight of the mineral in uh, water so the formula that is b divided by b minus a okay that will give you the specific gravity of a particular mineral so this is how the experiment works that is a walker steel yard balance which will uh, help us to find out the specific gravity of a mineral okay understood then uh, these are few examples of specific gravity of a particular mineral okay uh, yes then next property is hardness okay hardness is what how harder is the mineral so how to find out that what is the hardness so it is the resistance to scratching and abrasion how the mineral is resisting to scratching and abrasion that tells us the hardness so the hardness of a mineral is its resistance to scratching and abrasion that is called as hardness so it is again Uh, a relative scale uh, both the specific gravity and the hardness they are just the numbers okay they don't have any unit so minerals with higher number will scratch the mineral below them on the scale so this is a scale which will uh, determine the specific uh, sorry the hardness of a mineral so the first mineral that is the softest mineral that is a talc okay which is whose hardness is 1 okay then the next is gypsum then calcite fluorite whose hardness is 4 then apatite then orthoclase quartz topaz corundum and diamond so this scale wherein we have 10 minerals with the increasing hardness okay so softest mineral is talc and the hardest mineral is the diamond okay so this scale is called as the mohr scale of hardness are you getting so mohr scale of hardness it contains 10 minerals from the increasing number of the hardness so if you want to find the hardness of a unknown mineral what you can do is you can go on rubbing one by one Uh, with the known hardness so uh, suppose if you are uh, taking a mineral okay uh, whose hardness if you are finding out then first mineral if you take talc and you rub it on it then uh, if it produces powder if talc is getting powdered that means the hardness of this mineral is more than one okay like that if you go on taking one by one and at one stage you will come across uh there is no powder produced instead of powder the noise will produce 
okay uh, when you rub the two stones with the same hardness okay what you can hear is the noise okay or the sound so that sound indicates the hardness the both the minerals they have the same hardness so this is how we find out the hardness of an unknown mineral so this is one property that is hardness that, that is just a number okay what you have to remember the number so uh, the for example these minerals which are there in the hardness box you have to remember it uh, very perfectly like calcite it has hardness 3 okay quartz hardness is 7 so these harder minerals Uh, that is from seven, eight, nine, and ten. That is quartz, topaz, corundum, and diamond. They are used as a gemstones. Okay, they are used as gemstones because uh, they are very hard. They are devoid of cleavage. Cleavage is nothing but the breaking or the that makes the mineral weak. Okay, but here they are devoid of cleavage. Cleavages are absent, so they are harder minerals. Okay, so their hardness is more. Okay, so they are the harder minerals, and these are comparatively weak and softer minerals. Okay, so this is the hardness. The scale which determines the hardness is Mohs scale of hardness. The next property is fracture. so minerals that do not break along the cleavage line but they seem to have a pattern in their breaking uh, that have a fracture means what uh, when the mineral is breaking okay how the bre broken surface looks like okay that is called as fracture okay so that mineral should break apart from the cleavage plate okay cleavage is again breaking will come to that later so fracture means how the mineral is breaking how the surface okay uh, mineral surface looks after breaking that is called as fracture so mineral uh, when it breaks okay up, other than cleavage plane it will have a definite pattern of breaking that is called as fracture so there are different types of fracture like conchoidal which is shown by quartz hackley very jagged sharp, sharp surfaces fibrous then uneven even okay so here are the few examples which will uh, show you how the mineral is breaking okay here in this this is a quartz variety you can see it is breaking with a curved surface you can see here it is breaking with a curved surface like a glass okay how it breaks with a conchoidal conchoidal means curved surface concave or convex so here also you can see the mineral is breaking with a curved surface okay so that is called as what the conchoidal fracture here also you can see conchoidal fracture the mineral is breaking with a curved surface okay uh, then the crystals uh, they uh, yes the cleavage okay the next property is called as the cleavage so cleavage is breaking of a mineral other than Uh, so uh, along a definite plane that is called as cleavage so why the mineral will break or the cleave they, that is because some bonding between the atom that is not stronger uh, so along that weak zone the mineral will break and that is called as the cleavage that is the next property okay cleavage so cleavage means breaking of a mineral in a definite direction for example uh, the mica you have seen it has one set of cleavage it it is like your pages of book okay it splits layer by layer it breaks along that plane that is called as the a uh, basal cleavage okay then if you take a calcite okay calcite is a mineral which has a particular breaking pattern that is rhombic okay it breaks in a rhombic fashion so it has rhombic cleavage because it has three set of cleavages okay one okay one is this one one other one is this one and one more is horizontal that is 3d okay so you can imagine the three 
uh, set of cleavages which is shown by calcite okay so basal cleavage then some minerals they have cubic they break in a perfect cube okay cube like then it is called as the cubic cleavage so that is breaking in a definite pattern okay so this cleavage you can term uh, use the term to describe the cleavage as perfect distinct and indistinct so whatever i told you the basal cleavage rhombic cleavage and cubic cleavage they are very good breakages okay uh, so that is called as perfect then there are distinct where you can see the new surface broken by a frequent irregular steps okay that is not very clear then it is called as distinct then indistinct is usually uh, rough with only few planar areas so that is called as indistinct okay so here you can see the example okay cleavage the first one is breaking along this plane okay so that is a basal cleavage in one direction this is also a mica piece of mica which is splitting into layers okay layer by layer it will split so this has one set of cleavage so gypsum and calcite they have one set of cleavage okay this is calcite you can see the rhombic shape so this is the rhombic pattern you can see okay so this is a rhombic pattern then this is a feldspar wherein you can see the two set of cleavages one is this one and other one is very fine lines which are perpendicular to this main cleavage so that is it will have two set of cleavages so that is a cleavage which is again very important property of a mineral the because if the mineral is having cleavage that becomes weak because it will break very easily okay that is called as cleavage breaking of a mineral along a definite direction that is called as cleavage the next property is tenacity that is the behavior of mineral under pressure when when a mineral is subjected to pressure okay it will uh, behave with a different pattern that is uh, brittle malleable sectile ductile flexible elastic these are all the terms which we used to describe the tenacity of a mineral so brittle means when the mineral breaks and powders easily that is called as a brittle tenacity malleable uh, when you hammer it okay uh, without breaking you can prepare thin sheets then it is called as malleable then sectile means the mineral can be cut in uh, with the knife okay into slices they are very soft you can cut into slices using knife then ductile means you can draw into thin wires then flexible you can bend it and the bent form it will remain as it is that is permanent deformation elastic means when you release the pressure after bending okay it will come back to its original state like mica when you bend it it will bend but when you release the pressure it will come back to its original state that is called as elastic tenacity example is muscovite so these are again a uh, very important property that is tenacity then the next is crystal form so these crystals they occur in different shape different forms okay like this all the minerals they crystallize in one of these crystal system there are different crystal systems like cubic okay then cubic or isometric it is also called as tetragonal hexagonal orthorhombic monoclinic and triclinic so all these are called as crystal systems that will give a definite shape to the crystal okay because we know the definition of mineral it has a definite atomic structure so this defines the structure of the mineral so this depends upon the axis you can see there are three axes you can see here so for cubic all the three axes are same then it is it will form a cube for tetragonal one axis is longer and other two are smaller for hexagonal there are four axes you can see out of that one axis is either longer or shorter and three axes are same so that is hexagonal so it will have six faces 
tetragonal will have four faces okay orthorhombic uh, which will have all the uh, uh, three axes with different length okay then monoclinic wherein one axis is inclined and other two are horizontal okay one is inclined here triclinic all the three axis will be inclined so no need to go in depth just you have to remember in which crystal system uh, the mineral is belonging to okay so that is the uh, crystal system okay then the habit and form that is the last property so mineral occur in different forms okay i'll show you with the pictures first is acicular which uh, the mineral when it uh, it is when it is slender needle like okay crystals are formed then it is called as acicular bladed means blade like okay then radiating when the mineral looks like it is radiating from a common point okay that is called as radiating form okay form means how it is formed in the nature how what shape uh, it is showing okay so this is dendritic which looks like a branches of a tree you can see uh, so this looks like a branches of a tree okay so the native minerals usually they show this type of structure that is called as dendritic then next is globular you can see uh, individual uh, crystals uh, they are globe like okay We're rounded you can see a rounded globe like okay so this is called as globular structure so when these globes they look like bunches of grapes okay bunch of a grapes then it is called as botryoidal when these look like a bunch of grapes then it is called as botryoidal then there is one more called reniform where this is also similar to globular but each globe this it looks like kidney shape okay each globe it looks like a kidney shape then it is called as reniform okay then mammillary when it is very large okay when these globes are very large and conspicuous then it is called as mammillary structure example is malachite then foliated foliated means layered okay you can separate into thin plates or leaves then it is called as foliated then micaceous that is mica okay it splits into again layers these these layers are very thin then it is called as micaceous then next is tabular which is flat table like okay then it is called as tabular granular it is made up of a very com uh, composed of many individual grains which are of a similar size example is garnet so garnet uh, it will have a perfect shape okay uh, that is it is gra gra granular because it is made up of very fine grains which are of similar size okay then prismatic prism like or columnar which is uh, which looks like elongated crystals then the last uh, form uh, the terms which we used to describe the form crystallized crystallized means when the mineral occur as well developed crystal like this a uh, garnet okay you can see a perfect shape okay here you can see each face is rhombic okay and it will have 12 faces which is perfect okay uh, so such shape when the mineral forms it is called as crystallized form okay with the well developed crystals crystalline like the quartz group i have shown you so the crystals are not perfectly developed then it is called as crystalline example is rock crystal then next is crypto crystalline wherein the minerals are very finely divided okay uh, but individual crystal you cannot distinguish then it is called as crypto crystalline and the last one is amorphous wherein 
there is no crystalline structure is seen okay there is no internal structure developed at all then it is called as amorphous the example is opal opal is a quartz variety which uh, which is the only quartz with which uh, doesn't have any crystal system okay that is crystal structure that is amorphous so these are all the physical properties of minerals which we are going to discuss then uh, two more that is uh, the occurrence and uses where it occurs how it occurs okay uh, in what type of rocks the minerals are uh, formed okay that tells us uh, how the minerals are formed so these are all the physical properties and lastly very important you have to write the uses of all these minerals where they are used so they are used in our day to day life like uh, many minerals are used in electronic devices right your uh, or electronic devices then uh, some are used as fireproof material in your uh, acs refrigerators okay some are used in cement like gypsum calcite all these are used in cement okay so uh, the uses of those minerals some minerals are having uh, medicinal importance okay some are used as gemstones okay so all these uses are very very important that you have to remember and write so this is the first experiment what we are going to discuss in the lab that is the physical properties of minerals identifying the mineral and writing the physical properties of that so i hope you all have understood uh, the physical properties of minerals